Hey, it's Thomas with Autogefühl and I welcome you to a very special episode, the interview with the Volkswagen brand CEO, Herbert Dies. And this is all on your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and the number one community to discuss cars right here, right now. As Herbert Dies joined Volkswagen in mid-2015, formerly was a BMW manager and also formerly the role from the Volkswagen AG CEO and brand CEO was one person. Since mid-2015, it's two people, Matthias Müller for Volkswagen AG and Herbert Dies for the brand. And quite soon, he had to face his first crisis. So please give us an update. What's the status quo on the diesel issue, on the different markets they're facing? Mm. I think we are really making good progress now. We uh, started to change the software here in Europe for over 10,000 cars in only the last two weeks. People are very happy with the change, so the cars don't change in uh, performance-wise and uh, also consumption remains uh, very much the same, so people are very happy. They are properly dealt with in our, um, uh, in our uh, shops and stores. I think our whole retail organization is well prepared to, um, to really make that happen uh, in the next uh, coming months. So we are very optimistic. I think it's a very important step for us in Europe. And we are uh, very optimistic that within the coming months we will really convert Europe once again into a, let's say, positive outlook for us. We had a good start in the year. We have good product momentum to come. Tiguan is perceived uh, excellently. We only after two weeks we received 10,000 orders for the new car, which is <laughs> a new record. We have a good launch. So uh, in Europe uh, we are really, really optimistic. Uh, United States, you, you're well aware that we still have to, uh, in a close dialogue with the authorities there, to uh, agree to the solutions. Uh, our people are there. I think there is, uh, from both sides, uh, really um, a huge interest to solve the issues. And I'm also confident that we're making progress in the United States, which will be uh, probably the most uh, 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 challenging environment for us in 2016. China, they don't have any diesel uh, engines or very few diesel engines, so we had a good start in China. So worldwide, I'm quite sure that we can have, a, I wouldn't say overwhelming, but a decent year in 2016. What do you want to do now to regain trust for all of the customers worldwide? Yeah, actually, that's our most important task to regain the trust. Uh, first and foremost, we have to do the software change in a way that people are really fully happy with us. Uh, we, and I think we, we, we're making good progress. The, the solutions we developed are now coming to the market basically months by months. After the Amarok, now the uh, Passat is coming, really volume product. The first testings are excellent, so the cars will be fine. So dealer organization is preparing for it. And uh, dealing with that issue in a, in a proper way, honestly, uh, diligently, I think this is uh, the first important step to regain the trust of our customers. Many of those will have to follow because people are not uh, forgetting this very, uh, very, very, very soon. Uh, so we will work very hard to gain regain trust. On the other hand, I think uh, Volkswagen has a lot of strongholds and and also capabilities to be able to regain the trust. We have an excellent product quality meanwhile we have high residual values uh, the product lineup will, which will come to the market in the next years and months will be great uh, so our dealers we've just had a, a, a dealer conference here in europe they are really upbeat they are behind us also the dealers in the u.s by the way so uh, over the longer period i'm very optimistic about volkswagen will be even more crucial to now react on the three mega trends we have right now in the automotive industry, which is connectivity, autonomous driving, and of course, overall sustainability. And um, what are your plans on that one? Maybe um, let's start then also with electrification. I forgot. Let's start with electrification. Um, what are your concrete plans on that one? What can we expect? I know there's the MQE also coming. Maybe you can fill us on that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, as you mentioned, we, we, we truly believe that the industry will change and we will see a major change in the next 10 to 15 years where cars will become quite different. No, it has been a very evolutionary process over the past decades, but I think cars will change quite rapidly now. 
driven by uh, uh, sustainability or electrification of the drive trains, but probably more so by the car becoming a very important part of the internet and so becoming very uh, intelligent, smart. Uh, the car will be probably the, the smartest device uh, in the internet. And this trend goes really fast. New competitors entering. So how we are dealing with it? We set up a, a special team which we call New Volkswagen and their task is basically to reinvent Volkswagen for that kind of future. They are only dealing with electric cars, they are only dealing with fully connected cars, uh, self-driving uh, uh, capabilities the cars also should have. So they are not only ca designing cars but also the uh, let's say infrastructure, the back-end services and also new HMIs and the cloud behind the car. Uh, we're just starting with that. Uh, we have a quite powerful team uh, working on those cars. We showed some studies already. The, the buddy in Las Vegas, you, you uh, might be aware of that, which shows basically the direction we are going. We think that it will be necessary to work out a specific architecture to make full use of the electric drivetrains, uh, which we are also working on. And then in the next shows, we'll show different body styles which we can imagine on those kind of platforms. So the, the capabilities of a traditional car company have to change quite a lot. And... Uh, that makes necessary that we hire new people, get new technologies in, uh, look for new partners in the IT industry. If you're speaking of new Volkswagen behind us, I would definitely call this one a new Volkswagen. We have never seen such a concept here. It's the um, T-Cross Breeze. It's on the Polo basis. You, you wouldn't see it actually that it's on Polo basis because it looks, way, it looks way larger. This is of the next yeah, and tell us more about what it's, uh, what's the real highlight on this vehicle, yeah. besides of it, that's a, uh, it is a convertible. Yeah. SUVs are still a big trend worldwide. Now they are working or they are really uh, increasing market share worldwide from China to the US uh, to Europe. Uh, Volkswagen is uh, um, investing a lot in uh, SUVs. Uh, we're launching this year the Tiguan, next year another SUV, a little bit smaller, and this one will be the third. It's not sure whether it will appear in the, in the shape of a convertible, but you can imagine that this style works as well as a conventional SUV. It will be also a very important car on a worldwide basis. SUVs are becoming smaller, more environmental friendly, and um, if, if you allow, yes, sure. uh, I would like to show you that also the interior will, will change quite a lot. It's a new uh, HMI, new touch and feel of the interior, which is all show, also shown here in a prototype application, but you will see that quite soon in the next generation of Polos to come. But yes, our our cameraman can the look inside as well to see the, the HMI, the human machine interface. Yeah. And um, I'm especially interested because, you know, sometimes people say, oh, I sit down in the car and it's really overwhelming me. It's yeah. too much. So it has to be intuitive. How, the, how the, does it work? No, it has to be intuitive and uh, you're well aware that we also will face here new competitors like the Googles and Apples of the industry, so we have to make a major step. Uh, we think that we have a little bit of an advantage because we know what kind of information the driver needs, when, the, uh, when he is, uh, is the driver prepared to receive information, when the driver is prepared to interact. And that gives us a little bit of an advantage because we think ergonomically we can integrate the new services in a better way than the typical uh, uh, IT industry players. Uh, we will make sure that uh, you can interact with your music, phone in a way that you're not distracted from driving. And uh, I think we can do that in a better way than just the mobile phone devices uh, provider because we can play with a head-up display, we have the big screens, we can decide what to show on which screen at what time and how to interact. Is it touch and feel or is it gestics, for instance? Um, is it already working or, or is it um, show car stage that you cannot touch anything? I think it's, it should be working. I'm not sure whether it's uh, now set up. It's probably now in a display mode. But uh, if, you, if you will be back, I think it can be shown to you. Yeah. 
One topic I'm especially seeking after is sustainability, also as for the surfaces, for example, of okay. the seats, because, you know, there's this old conce um, conception of true leather, of genuine leather, yeah. which is now obviously not really sustainable and not for the animals, not for the environment. Here we also see something different, especially on the yeah, inside. You know, the animals are not uh, uh, grown because of the leather. The animals are grown basically for the meat and uh, we use the leather for the... <laughs> well, you, you, uh, give, you fund an industry that is relying on killing. And so, you know, that's okay. then a no-go for me. Is it a, a Lazaretti on the outside? I can't say, but it's probably, it looks like, because a very modern style, it's textile here, and, and that should be Lazarette. But I can't, uh, I can't tell you. Uh, but are you basically um, thinking of, you know, using, for example, more plant-based materials that are more sustainable and will sure. reduce the um, investment of animal-based materials? No, for sure, because sustainability also converts into a new perception of what, of what is valuable, not what, what people want to touch and feel. And the materials are becoming more natural, more... Uh, a regrown material, more natural based material. We can see that in different applications. Uh, for instance, uh, in former times, uh, conventional plastic is now being substituted in, in grown materials. This is a gradual process which uh, I think uh, many cars companies are working on. Uh, so, so do we in Volkswagen. I know electrification is a very special subject of you you've been also um, active in an initiative in germany and i would like to know what about you know the science location germany does it have future for electrification or will that all only be done in china okay yeah that's a good question uh, which is a question also the the whole industry and politics are concerned about because um, i would say to be successful on the long run in an international market you need a strong home market and uh, it, it looks like that other markets are developing uh, bigger growth in electric cars than Germany or Europe even Europe now we have a really high growth on the west coast in the United States we have high growth in China NEVs are how they call, how they call those cars are growing fast in China, basically doubling sales every year. Uh, so we have to make sure that Germany becomes not only a development hub or platform for electric cars, but also one of the key markets worldwide. And I think politics are uh, and politicians are play a major role there. We need the kind of environment where we really can convince our customers that electric cars is the right way forward. So electrification is one subject. Um, CNG would be an alternative, I think and we um, probably get off yes. the, the <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a little bit twisty <laughs> in, the, in the head then. Um, but uh, the Volkswagen Up is really good example because yeah. this one is also available as CNG, it's and um, CNG and as an electric car. As CNG and as an electric car. So the app has uh, has uh, all different drivetrains. Uh, now also a very sporty 90 horsepower um, gas engine. Uh, but also as an electric car, I think it's quite attractive. And CNG is, uh, is uh, first choice in Italy, for instance, and here in Germany. And so that's uh, the last question. Let's just imagine 10 years from now and you look back. What, be, what would be the main thing you would be connected to the brand of Volkswagen? I would probably, no, it's, it's very difficult to say. Uh, you look back and, and for sure it, it, it will be different than what I'm saying now. But I can imagine that uh, looking back, I would probably see 2016 as a very important year for Volkswagen because of a lot of change happening. No new uh, board of management, uh, new people, the approach to a new working culture, new organization, a new orientation for the brand, a new Volkswagen becoming as a, let's say, driver of our ideas and business. So 2016 would be probably a, 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 a tipping point year for Volkswagen. That's what I, what I think. Uh, you know, every crisis is a chance and we will make the best of this, out of this crisis. Thank you very much to you and thank you very much for you also for watching hope you liked our special episode and join us more geneva coverage it will be all linked in the video description and also more details about the volkswagen up facelift and also the special convertible concept we've seen as well so check out that one as well and see you next time